Uh, thanks uh, for the organizers to, to having put this together and also inviting me. This was, uh, um, I apologize, I couldn't be there in person. I had last minute changes in travel plans. Uh, also, I will advertise the Simon's collaboration on global categorical symmetry, which flows quite nicely from Xu Hang's talk. So the subject that I will tell you about is both old and new with many interesting um, um, developments. So I'll provide sort of a more glossy picture of what's going on and, and what, what it's hoped to do. So already it's been stated in several ways that quantum field theory is the most successful framework we have for exploring nature. However, one of the very much outstanding question is the systematic understanding of strong dynamics and strong couple system in, 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 in general. And to this end, supersymmetry has been already been discussed is a very powerful way to explore this. And if we focus under the lamppost of supersymmetry, there is geometry emerges as a unifying framework for many different questions you might want to study and understand for, 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 for strong dynamics. And then if you then study QFT as coming from uh, string theory, the geometry of QFT is quite natural. And in fact, that is the first set of information that you get and, and you can explore them in, in that way, such as the moduli space of vacua, duality or conformal manifold. So the question then that emerges, can I use uh, um, string theory to broadly um, characterize uh, what can strong dynamics look like? So when we say we want to classify QFTs, uh, what we really want to say here, we want to understand what does strong coupled system do and what do they look like and what sort of phenomena can exist out there. So before we proceed to briefly review the paradigm which we work in, when we talk about a quantum field theory and, and, and classifying them, we would like to think of a quantum field theory as an RG itself, right? Such an RG flow will have some UV fixed point and some IR fixed point, and along the flow, everything couples. The, the, the classification story is then to understand what are possible UV fixed points and IR fixed points, and these are conformal field theory. They have emergent scale invariants have been pointed out uh, already. From this perspective, uh, when you say you want to study the space of QF QFTs, what we really want to start first is to characterize conformal field theories and this sort of have motivated several of the questions that we have already seen uh, uh, today. From this point of view, once you understand the conformal field theory that are possible, uh, you can deform the CFT by adding interactions, or you can you can add forces which which corresponds to gauging uh, uh, some symmetries. So when we want to understand QFT, we want to characterize the neighborhood of this point and the neighborhood of the UV point. A simple example that we all know in the case of uh, Lagrangian setups, if we take free massless fermion scalars, so we can treat as CFTs, uh, and interactions as gauge could be like gauge field and, and very few cow coupling. So, so in, in, and, and in general, as already been pointed out, the CFTs have this, enjoy this extra symmetry and they can be characterized by bootstrap equations, which are infinite set of consistency conditions in general. So, before we proceed, let's just remind ourselves what we know about CFTs uh, as of now in some, from a classification point of view. So they can exist in various dimensions. In, in less than D less than four, there are many examples coming from condensed matter and holography, which are supersymmetric and non-supersymmetric. When we go to 4D, there is a huge list, but most of those li that list is actually supersymmetric theories that are strongly coupled. There are very few known non suzy uh, CFTs, which are perturbative. However, as soon as we go to five and six, all known examples are going to be uh, supersymmetric and, 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 and are constructed from, from, from string theory. And an important point of these higher dimensional uh, SUSY models is that, um, that, is that they are often, they're, they're always very strongly coupled and they're isolated in a sense that they admit no tunable parameters or said another way, you, it's hard to construct a Lagrangian that will flow to them um, um, directly. So there is, a, there is a very precise sense of saying that they're isolated uh, 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 objects. So when we then talk about geometric engineering, what we mean to say is, is, is to, to sort of define this paradigm is, 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 is really starting with some string theory or M theory model 
And you imagine reducing such a string theory or M theory on some manifold X, which is non-compact. So the term geometric engineering was coined by Waffe some time ago, precisely when you do this. A more physical way to think about this is to do what we typically think about in doing in string OM theory when we try to get low dimensional model, but we imagine decoupling gravity completely by let's say decompactifying whatever compact dimension that you're reducing from. The fact that you're decompactifying is an effect of, of decoupling gravity from the story. And often what's left is some quantum field theory and such a quantum field theory can have many and varied interesting uh, uh, properties. The typical depiction of such a construction is, is this, you imagine having some sort of a cone of, of some manifold XD and at the tip of the cone, usually there is some singularity that, that exists there. And, and the leftover degree of freedom when you reduce string theory in such a background are the degree of freedom that are stuck on such a singularity and, and, and still going to be described by, by some, some quantum field theory. The manifold XD usually in, has some reduced holonomy this is a consequence of SUSY, and that is a very powerful constraint in thinking about what can XD look like. From this point of view, you can make a classification program that is well-defined, which is to ask what are the possible singularities that can exist subject to some SUSY uh, constraint. This is both a, a geometric and an algebraic problem, which can be studied with, with very powerful tools in mathematics. And it moves away from the standard paradigm of studying quantum field theory via a Lagrangian. Such a models are common in F theory constructions or in M theory constructions on some G2 manifolds. Another approach to constructing uh, quantum field theory is, is, is also old and, and new in the, uh, on, the, on the same time, is to consider some D brain configuration. So brains are extended states within, within string theory. And you can imagine taking some D brain and putting it at the tip of some cone, some D dimensional cone. And, and such a cone literally corresponds to taking some compact space and, 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 and putting it on a cone in just one direction. And then, and then it looks something like not compact. That's a case where also gravity will decouple. And you can then think about the degree of freedom that live on the brain themselves, that's also going to be captured by some quantum field theory. This gives, provides you an even larger way of constructing QFTs uh, and CFTs in, 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 in string theory. You can also take those brains to probe specific singularities as we've described in the previous uh, transparency about geometric engineering. And this leads to an even larger, richer class of models that you can construct. You can do intersecting brain models among other things. The, one of the nice things with this perspective is that this, this, this picture, you can also study directly in, 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 the hol in holography by imagining taking the D brain states and then letting them back react and look at the near horizon limit. And such a setup also allow you to get explicit holographic models that will describe the same, the same uh, uh, field theory. This perspective, is very complementary to the previous one, uh, which is just to decouple gravity in that often you can have the same quantum field theory, the same CFT, enjoy two different constructions and, and they provide different perspectives from which you can use to study and, 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 and compare. At a more modern level, uh, something that we have seen that's, that's been quite interesting recently is to think about CFTs in higher dimensions since we've just des described them which, and consider Lorentz breaking uh, uh, deformation. In such a case, we can consider flows that go from the 6D to the 4D CFT. And the 4D CFT themselves can then be organized precisely as being defined by the flow itself. So T reduction will lead to CFTs that, that both have standard Lagrangian perspective, but most are going to be non-Lagrangian, meaning they will be strongly coupled and in some cases isolated. Um, here, when we say non-Lagrangian, what it just means is we haven't had a way of constructing a Lagrangian that flows to them. But it, it is sort of interesting that the natural thing that you get when you try to do this geometric construction is something which is uh, always strongly coupled and very different from standard uh, pictures of many, many things that we know about quantum field theory. 
So the, the reduction of the 6D CFT on the 2D space itself then provides this organization principle. So what this looks like, uh, let's consider a specific example where we studied this to see what it looks like. So if we just consider this example of 6D theories on, on, on a Riemann surface, the nice thing is 2D spaces are completely classified. Uh, 2D orientables, in this case, orientable here, um, by the genus that they have and the number of punctures that, 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 that live on, on them. So from this perspective, a single 6D CFT can yield an infinite family of 4D theories, which are organized by the data of a choice of a, of a, of a, of a 2D surface and by the choice of a boundary condition on, that lives on the holes on, of, of these surfaces. So boundary conditions usually come with them some global symmetry that you can associate to your quantum field theory. So you can even go further because geometrically, Riemann surfaces enjoy some plumbing process, meaning you can cut and uh, glue in various ways to construct an even more interesting uh, Riemann surfaces. So there is a sort of building block from this perspective akin to having free fields in, in, in Lagrangian series. So each building block is going to be labeled by what you usually call a pair of pants, and then some choice of a boundary condition, which will associate some global symmetry to the, to the theory in the same sense I might pick some hypermultiplet or some chiral superfield and take a family of them in some representation of a group. And in, from this perspective, interactions corresponds to picking different choices of gluing. Okay. So the picture that emerged in trying to do a geometric classification is we can start with some five or six D theories and imagine reducing them in four D similar to what I've just described. And then the five D and six D theories themselves may admit a, a classification directly from, from string theory. So this chain allow you to have a classification of four D theories. And you can also in many cases study directly starting from some string theory to some 4D theory. And of course, the question you can ask is, is this classification complete? Do you capture all possible strong dynamics that can occur at least supersymmetrically? And this is a, obviously a very interesting question. And part of this will be to compare with several of the other methods that was just described in the previous, previous talk. Another very important- out of, You're kind of out of time, so if you could sort of- Speed up. Okay, so I will finish up now. So, so another important perspective in studying this classification is holography, where here you can turn the actual classification prob problem to exact PDE that you can solve and, 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 and study. For example, you can study n equal to two theories by a studying solution of the Tora equation, and you can study four n equal to one SCFTs by studying something like the Mojan pair equation. So with this, I will end. There is one more set of ideas which have emerged quite recently, which is related to symmetry. So now that you have a classification, how should you label theories? It turns out one excellent way to label them is to understand all of the symmetric structure of such a theory and the various anomalies associated with them. This is called a symmetry topological field theory and these are computable and something you can study directly from geometric construction. And this is a very active and engaging field of research. So the topics that I've described so far appear in various white papers which exist, one of them that I'm involved with, 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 with Dan Freed, Greg Moore and others. And also there is the superconformal field theory ones by which is very important that everyone should read. There you should find a very extended list of citations of what's been done. Thank you. Thanks Siba for this very nice overview. Questions, either from the audience or from Zoom. So I have a couple of quick questions. So one is, do we know of any um, superconformal field theory which we can realize by purely field theoretic methods that has not been embedded in string theory? I don't know of one. I don't know of an example. Okay. We, there, there are examples that you can get as from, from, from what you know by moduli space techniques from which you might think how to get them from string theory. 
but purely from standard field theory technique, I don't know immediately want. There is usually a way to, to, to get it. As I would have suspected. Now, um, a more uh, detailed, perhaps technical question. Do we know of any um, theory that you can get from a geometric engineering in to be with Calabiao, which you cannot get from class S? Or the two, or the two schemes are, are completely equivalent? So this is a very active arena of research. In fact, um, now there are several examples that have been constructed on both sides. And I'm involved on some of, some of these projects in actually trying to understand how to go from one of them. So first order, you expect it should be possible simply because you have string duality. And if you have a string duality of some singularities in type 2B, usually by enough sequence of duality, you can map it to some brain setup in type 2A or some other uh, geometric things in, 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 in M theory. So it's really a question of how creative you become and how far you want to push. And so far, if you push hard enough, you usually solve the problem. Thank you. Anything else? If not, oh, yes. Uh, just just a, a quick question. Uh, you, you, I, saw, I was surprised to see the occurrence of the, the Mange Ampere equation. Uh, that's, I guess, that shows up in optimal transport. Can you just say something briefly about uh, how it appears in this context? Good. So Mange Ampere equations, uh, in, at least in, in, in string theory, the first, the place where we where we see it quite prominently is when we talk about um, Calabria sixfold and the trying to understand the metric on a Calabria sixfold. There you have some 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 um, uh, 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 you have the Ricci flat conditions, which which becomes the this Mont Ampere equation. So 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 generally, so when when I'm looking at ADS five in in, in M theory, there is a transverse space. This transverse space has some avatar, which, which appeared from some Calabia structure. And then by the time you reduce all the differential equations, you just get the real Mont Ampere equations appear, not the complex one, which is the one that appears in, 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 in Calabia. But, but, but usually in physics, the Mont Ampere equations tend to appear whenever you have some interesting Kähler structure uh, present in your system. And indeed, when you study n equal to one CFT, in 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 M theory, there is a Kähler structure that governs the transverse uh, space time. So you shouldn't be surprised in that point of view that you get a Mont Ampere equation. It's, it's it's surprising though that that's that's the only thing you get and nothing else. Even though the manifold can be very complicated, it remembers something about the setup very far in the UV. Thank you. So we can thank Kiba and all the other speakers of the morning session. <laughs>